Presentation of Science Trek on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. Your muscles give your body shape and movement. Muscles help you move, breathe, digest your food, and pump blood all around your body. Want to learn more about muscles? We're standing by to answer your questions. Stay tuned. Science Trek is next. Hi, I'm Joan Cartan Hansen. Welcome to Science Trek and welcome to the Portneuf Medical Center here in Pocatello, Idaho. We're here today to answer your questions about muscles and the muscular system. But before we do, let's learn a little bit more. You have three types of muscles in your body. Skeletal muscles help you move. Smooth muscles help you eat and breathe. Cardiac muscles help your heart beat. You have about 650 muscles in your body, and they come in all shapes and sizes. Some are wide sheets of tissue, like the muscles in your back. Others are circles or triangles. Skeletal muscles are made up of log-shaped fibers with hundreds and hundreds of strands. The thinnest strands overlap one another like fingers laced together. There are two types of fibers. Fast-twitch fibers contract quickly, giving you a burst of energy and slow twitch fibers provide your muscles with a sustained release, so the muscles can act longer. Some skeletal muscles are attached to your skin or other muscles, but most are attached to your bones with tendons. Wriggle your fingers. You can see cords just under your skin. These are the tendons connecting muscles in your lower arm to your finger bones. Skeletal muscles work in pairs. When you lift something, one muscle contracts or tightens, and the other muscle relaxes or loosens. The contracting and relaxing action pulls up the muscle and your arm bone. And it takes more than 300 muscles working together just to take one single step. Muscles are the meat of the body. They make up about a third to half your body weight. Muscles are loaded with blood vessels and nerves. Blood brings muscles food and oxygen so they can work and take away waste products. And signals from your brain travel through the nerves to tell your muscles what to do. Skeletal muscles are voluntary, that is, you can control them. Smooth muscles are involuntary, that is, they work without you having to think about them. Smooth muscles are found in places like the walls of your stomach and blood vessels. When you get cold, tiny smooth muscles pull on the hairs of your skin and you get goosebumps. Cardiac muscles are also involuntary, and they exist only in your heart. And unlike other muscles, it never gets tired. Cardiac muscles contract to squeeze blood out of your heart and relaxes to fill your heart with blood. You can injure your muscles. Muscle strains happen when muscle fibers stretch too far or tear. But with ice and rest, your body can usually heal itself in time. You can keep your muscles healthy by eating right, lots of vitamins, minerals, and protein, by drinking water, and by keeping your muscles strong. And the best way to do that is to exercise. If you don't exercise, your muscles can shrink and lose strength. So, so get, get active every day. And joining me now to answer your questions about muscles and the muscular system is Dr. Tony Joseph, a member of the American Academy of Family Physicians, the Idaho Academy of Family Physicians, and the American Medical Society of Sports Medicine. Thank you for joining us. Well, it's great to be here, and this is a great opportunity for me as well. Okay, let's go to your questions. Hi, my name is Deborah from Cynthia Mann Elementary, and my question is, what are muscles made of? Muscles are made out of a uh, substance called protein, and protein is what makes up the makeup of the, uh, the structure of the muscle, and that's what holds it together. My name is Bodhi from Valley View Elementary School, and my question is, can you transplant a muscle? One of the muscles you can transplant at this time is a heart muscle, and uh, it's done almost every day around the world, and uh, there are various programs to save the heart 
uh, which is one big muscle and uh, transplanted into another person. Hi, my name is Amy. I go to Cynthia Mann Elementary and I'm wondering how many muscles do we have in our body? We have a, approximately 650 muscles in our body. Hi, my name is Kendrick and I go to Camrya Elementary in Camrya, Idaho. My question is, why do your muscles, muscles hurt after one you exercise? Well, there's two reasons why our muscles hurt after we exercise. Immediately after exercise, our muscles will accumulate a substance called lactic acid and that lactic acid, uh, when it's in your muscles, will cause your muscles to burn and ache. Uh, there's also a delayed response. One or two days later, if you've noticed when you run hard or lift hard, your muscles ache. They actually break down and it tears the cellular structure of the muscles. That forces or gives your body stimulus to make a stronger muscle and it will come back the next time being stronger. Reese would like to know, how come we shiver or get goosebumps when we're cold or scared? Um, what, what we have in our skin is a series of uh, involuntary muscles, muscles that we don't tell to uh, contract. Well, they, when these muscles contract, they'll uh, pinch up our skin in a method that creates little bumps we call goosebumps or goose flesh, and those little bumps uh, our way of telling our skin to take that blood that normally goes to it and divert it back into our body and that way we can keep that warm blood inside of ourselves. We also shiver as a way to contract our muscles. Again, we don't tell our muscles to do that. If our muscles sense that we're too cold, usually after we get goosebumps, then we'll start shivering and that shivering is our muscles generating energy uh, that energy that they already have stored in them to create more heat for our body. Hi, my name is Kavery. I'm from Caldwell Agnes Elementary School. My question is, what is the most important muscle in your body? Uh, that, well, that, that's a matter of opinion and it depends on uh, certain people's uh, opinion, uh, opinion about that. But I would have to say that our heart is our most important muscle because without that, if it stops functioning, then we stop functioning. So I would, uh, hands down, uh, my uh, choice would be the heart. Hi, my name is Tony. I am from Caldwell Avenue Elementary School. My question is, why is exercise important for the healthy muscles? Well, Tony, the, uh, that's a great question because uh, a lot of people don't see the reason uh, for exercise, but exercise does uh, several things. It not only strengthens the muscles of your whole body and holds your skeleton together, but it also strengthens your heart. And your heart requires exercise to make it stronger than just everyday life. So if, if something happens to you, it can respond to that with more force. We need extra force in our muscles of our body and our heart to keep us uh, going throughout our lifetime. Kyle would like to know, are all muscles made of the same thing? Well, we have different muscles in our body. So in our voluntary muscles, they are made of the, the same proteins and the same structural uh, makeup. Uh, the same holds true for our involuntary muscles, either in the smooth or cardiac muscles. They're made up of, uh, they are a little bit different in their structure, um, but all of those categories of muscles have the same uh, uh, substance. Hello, my name is Jenna from Caldwell Adventist Elementary School, and my question is, what is the thickest muscle? Jenna, that's a great question. The thickest muscle in the body is the gluteus maximus. That is the muscle that's behind you, your bottom or your butt, and it's something you sit on, but it's also a very powerful muscle used for running, jumping, and a lot of the activities that you do to control your leg. Hi, my name is Jaden from Cynthia Mann Elementary School, and my question is, do muscles have fluids in them? 
muscles have fluid in them. They have a, a very large blood supply, which uh, majority of blood is fluid. And within the structure of muscle, we have water. Uh, water helps carry some of the uh, calcium and other uh, 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 substances that help the muscles function and contract. The smallest muscle in your body is in your ear. It's smaller than a grain of rice and moves small bones that help you hear. The longest muscles are in your legs. They stretch from your hips to the inside of your knees. By the way, muscles never push body parts. They always pull. Hi, my name is Isabella from Cynthia Mann Elementary School. And my question is, do boys develop more muscles than girls? And if so, then why? For muscles, uh, the same number of muscles develop in girls as boys. Boys just tend to get bigger muscles because they have uh, more of a uh, hormone called testosterone. And testosterone tends to make boys' muscles bigger, but women have it as well and can develop muscles uh, equally in the same number as men. Cole would like to know what keeps our muscles in place? Well, that's a great question, Cole, because there's several things that keep it in place. Uh, we have a series of membranes that uh, in, uh, go around the muscles that hold it and keep its shape or form. Some of the uh, forms are flat. Some of it uh, are more of a feather or what we call a pennate structure. And then on either end, it's anchored to a bone, uh, either through a tendon or another attachment point, And that gives it its, uh, its resting shape. Hello, my name is Jackson, and I go to Cynthia Mann Elementary School. And my question is, how can you keep your muscles healthy? One of the things to keep your muscles healthy is to exercise. If you exercise every day, uh, either by uh, uh, two different types of exercises, lifting weights uh, or running or some sort of sp uh, sporting activity, your muscles will stay strong and healthy and keep them from tearing. Hi, my name is Luke and I go to Kamei Elementary School in Kamei, Idaho. My question is, what's the difference between fast twitch muscles and slow twitch muscles? Our body has two types of voluntary muscles. Um, slow twitch muscles are mostly uh, the muscles that we use every day uh, to walk, uh, to do uh, movements that uh, are, don't require what I would call explosive energy. Uh, if you jog at a very uh, slow rate, you use uh, slow twitch muscles. They have a lot more blood uh, flowing to them and can use energy very slowly. Fast twitch muscles are used when you're forced to sprint or run and those muscles uh, have uh, a system where they use energy very quickly and store energy so that you can take off very fastly. Morgan would like to know how strong can your muscles be? Well there are certain limitations to how long, uh, strong our muscles can be. Our muscles can be only as strong as the tendons that hold them together. If our muscles become stronger than our tendons, uh, then they will uh, pull or tear our tendons off our bones. So they can be strong to a certain extent, but we found out through research, and a lot of the research is in cattle or cows, uh, that we can make muscles uh, stronger uh, than we realized even 10, 20 years ago. So the, the limits of uh, muscle strength are still being realized at this point in time. So, um, but it won't be infinite. It will be something of the limitations of the skeletal system and what can hold us together. My name's Mwen and I'm from Valley View Elementary. My question is, how do involuntary muscles do what they do without you thinking about them? That is a great question as well. The, um, this, the involuntary muscles are connected to your nervous system and to your brain. And for example, with your heart, the, uh, the muscles uh, have a set of pacemakers that move the muscles at a set amount of time. Uh, 
when you eat, the smooth muscles of your esophagus and stomach know that it's time to contract through a feedback mechanism to your brain. Hi, my name is Dustin and I go to Cynthia Mann Elementary School and my question is how do muscles work? Muscles work uh, in, together, it's sort of a teamwork approach. Uh, while one muscle pulls, the other one pushes. That is, they go opposite directions. That way, uh, your body isn't loose and floppy and we have muscles that work together uh, that is, one muscle knows what the other muscle is doing, and so uh, we balance uh, these muscles out throughout our body. Cara would like to know, how long does it take for muscles to grow stronger? Uh, for our muscles to grow stronger, we typically, uh, if we want to make them stronger, for example, lifting heavier objects or weights, uh, if we were in ancient Greece, we would be lifting calves or cows. That's how they got stronger. And uh, it takes one to two days to get a response from our muscles after they break down to tell them to grow. And after that, it takes one to two weeks for those muscles to grow stronger. You have one muscle in your body that's like no other. It's your heart. So let's learn a little bit more. Tucked safely within your chest is your heart. It's actually a muscle about the size of your fist. And with every squeeze, your heart fills with blood and then empties out. That pounding you feel is called the heartbeat. Put your hand on the side of your neck or right beneath your wrist and you can feel it beating. It beats every minute, every day and night, no matter what you're doing. The heart sends blood throughout your entire body. It's no small task pumping blood to and from every vein and blood vessel. Did you know if your blood vessels were stretched from end to end, they would circle the globe nearly three times? In a grown-up, a heart beats about 70 times a minute. In an eight-year-old, it's about 90 beats a minute. And in a newborn baby, the heart beats around 140 beats per minute. When you kick up a storm at Taekwondo or run hard with your friends at the playground, your heart pumps faster and pumps more blood to feed oxygen and nutrients to your muscles. When you're sitting still or reading, it doesn't pump as hard. So how does it know when you're changing gears? Well, your heart is kind of like a small, efficient power plant. It's constantly aware of what the rest of your body is doing and what energy you need to kick into action. Your heart does that by generating an electrical impulse. It sends signals all over your body. Everything from your fingers to your toes gets the zap of energy needed to get going. Keeping your heart healthy is important to staying healthy. Sometimes parts of the heart can get clogged. That's the sign of a very serious illness. It's called cardiovascular disease, and it's the number one cause of death in this country. So how do you keep that from happening? Well, you can start by eating healthy foods. Doctors encourage children to start good eating habits when they're young and keep good habits as they get older. Another good way to keep your heart beating strong is to get plenty of exercise. Running around with friends, jumping rope, anything that keeps you moving. Those are the best ways to make sure your heart muscles keep pumping and you stay heart healthy your whole life. Hunter, I'm from Valley View Elementary. My question is, is there any part of our body that doesn't have muscles? Well, in our body, um, it is, as far as uh, movement and uh, other functions, uh, muscles are a part of almost every part of our body. And there's uh, literally no part of our body that isn't connected to a muscle in some fashion. Mark would like to know, are muscles red because of the blood that runs through them? Well, there's uh, several things that make muscles red. Uh, one is the blood that runs through them. The other thing uh, that uh, makes muscles red is a substance called uh, myoglobin. And myoglobin uh, uh, gives uh, muscles that uh, reddish uh, color, uh, muscles that have more of the blood uh, vessels and the myoglobin look redder uh, 
uh, than others. Uh, the difference between on a chicken, uh, breast meat and uh, thigh meat, that thigh meat has more of those substances. True, it would like to know, what is the most powerful muscle in the human body? That is a, a great question, Truett, and uh, it's, it's not what you think it's going to be because if we look at the two types of muscles, voluntary and involuntary, in, in the world of involuntary muscles, the, the most powerful muscle in, in that world is our heart, and that makes sense because it's beating all the time. It has to force blood and move blood throughout your whole body. The most po powerful voluntary muscle in your body is not what you'd think it'd be. I would think it'd be your thigh muscle, but it, it is actually our tongue. And our tongue uh, controls uh, speech and other things, uh, such as eating, and it is the most powerful muscle in our body. Daniel would like to know how many muscles are in the heart? Well, it would seem like the heart uh, would be divided into different muscle or muscle groups, but actually the heart is one big muscle. It works together to pump the blood either through the right side or the left side, but all those work together even though they contract at different times as one big muscle. Hi, I'm Grace from Caldwell Adventist Elementary School. We have been reading about our body having smooth muscles. My question today is do we have rough muscles? Uh, we do not have rough muscles. We have smooth muscles that control a lot of the functions of our body that we don't have to think about. They're involuntary, such as swallowing your stomach and other functions inside your body. Ava would like to know, can muscles pop? Well, when muscles pop, um, <clears throat> that pop is usually a bad sign. That's usually the muscle tearing or straining and uh, and a lot of people when they pop a muscle they'll come into my office and say I felt my muscle in my calf pop that was that muscle tearing or straining. Hello my name is Moses and I am from Valley View Elementary and my question is what would happen if we had no skeletal muscles? Well, Moses, if we had no skeletal muscles, that's a funny question because if we had no skeletal muscles, we would fall to the ground in a crumple of bones and organs and we wouldn't be able to move. And so uh, life as we know it would not be the same. Hello, my name is Katie from El Valley View Elementary. My question is, when you work out, how does it make your muscles stronger? When we work out, our muscles uh, will break down a little bit each time we work out. For example, if you lift weights, the next day you may be sore. That soreness is the muscle breaking down. With that, there is a signal back to your body that your muscles uh, will start getting bigger and stronger. It'll stimulate your muscles to grow, and that can occur throughout your lifetime. Shiloh would like to know, what do muscles do? Well, muscles uh, do uh, functions uh, in, in, in a different way than we think of because muscles will uh, work voluntarily for us. They'll move our bodies so that we can go from one end of our house to the other. But while you're thinking about the fact that you want to go get a glass of milk from the refrigerator, um, our involuntary muscles are preparing for that glass of milk uh, by helping us swallow that down and you don't even have to think about that. And meanwhile, your heart is pumping uh, to, uh, to move blood through your body to allow your muscles to work and or your stomach or your esophagus to drink that milk. So um, there are a lot of things behind the scenes that help them uh, uh, keep us functioning. Hi, my name is Quinn. I am from Caldwell Adventist Elementary School, and my question is, how many muscles does a frog have? Well, all living creatures have muscles, uh, and they require those muscles to move. Uh, the frog has 126 muscles, uh, but from my experience with my pet frog, I know that most of those muscles, uh, at least the strongest ones, are going to be in the leg. Allison would like to know, how are our muscles connected to our brain so that they can move us? Well, our muscles are connected 
uh, to our brain through the nervous system and nerves that come out of our brain uh, will tell our muscles how to move. There's a series of nerves, not unlike uh, telephone wires or electrical wires that go into our house and they will send a signal from the brain down to the muscles to tell it to contract or move. Before we run out of time, Dr. Joseph, why did you decide to become a doctor who studies about muscles? Well, uh, when I was uh, playing sports in high school, I, I was fascinated by how our bodies got stronger and how we uh, could improve our performance through exercise. And then when I went to medical school, I met a cardiologist who uh, just worked on uh, exercise and he did research on it and I became fascinated with it. And at some point I thought about being a cardiologist, but uh, at that time they had created a new specialty called sports medicine. And that entailed all the things I wanted to do, uh, treating athletes and seeing injuries to uh, athletes on the field and how I could not only improve or help them return to activity faster and safer, but also help prevent injuries uh, before they even uh, hurt themselves. So it was, it, was a, it was a good fit for me. And if someone is interested in studying about muscles, what should they study in school? Well, it starts with the basics. So you really have to study all the uh, factors and all the uh, programs that go into uh, medicine or biology and that would start with math and um, some of your basic science. Uh, with math you learn how to uh, to do some of the pro or solve some of the problems that go along with uh, uh, medicine and you use it every day. I use it every day in my practice and so you have to start uh, uh, having a passion or an interest for those basic studies and carry that on through high school, college, and uh, graduate studies if that's what you want to do. Thank you, Doctor. I'm sorry we've run out of time. I appreciate you joining us today. Well, it's been a great opportunity for me as well, and I hope all the children out there have learned a lot more about muscles today. And our thanks to the folks here at the Portneuf Medical Center for hosting us. You can learn lots more about muscles and the muscular system and lots of scientific topics on the Science Trek website. And we'll answer more questions about muscles on Science Trek, the web show. And if you want to submit a question for Science Trek, it's easy. And you and your class can win prizes. You can send it as an email or as a video question, record it on your webcam or cell phone. And if you're an educator, we'll lend you a camera. Our last prize winner was Brock in Amy Peterson's class at Oahe Harbor School in Boise. So to find out all about muscles and the muscular system, how to send in your questions, and how to win, go to the Science Trek website. And each week, check out my blog for the latest science news for kids. You'll find it all at idahoptv.org slash science trek. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Science Trek. Presentation of Science Trek on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. If you want to learn more about this topic or watch our videos, check out the Science Trek website at idahoptv.org slash science trek.